Oh yes, the Russia 9. I know it's been a long time coming, guys, and I apologize for the delay. Uh, but here today, I am here to uh, kind of give you guys what I have found with Russia 9 is the best kind of uh, builds I have found that works for me. Obviously, a little bit's changed in 9.2 since I played a lot of Russia 9, but some things have stayed the same. And uh, hopefully, I can give you a little glimpse into what I have discovered with Russia 9, what kind of tactics I use with it, and uh, kind of the builds that I will throw together um, for it. Now, I gotta say, guys, I love the Prussia 9 uh, uniforms. I know on a non-tactical note, they just they look very clean. And of course, the Prussians that go with them, pretty good looking as well. Just, you know, got the, the coats in the... The green mixed with the uh, the brown tan looking uniforms. Love it. I've always loved it. Of course, I do like the classic red and green, but they got some drip. They got some drip, guys. You gotta you gotta love it. Um, obviously, also the cavalry looks amazing. We got some uh, some crosshairs as well. Very very awesome. So uh, now first. We'll uh, we'll go over the builds, then I'll kind of talk about some tactics here. So now, when looking at Russia Nine, obviously it depends on when what you roll. Um, <laughs> depending on depending on uh, what time zone you're in, the roll will change. Uh, but the thing to consider with Russia is uh, the morale is not the greatest. Even with the 9.2 update, it does increase the morale overall of the units. Um, I tend to go with a higher store general. You obviously can do Romanov or Doktorov. Bagration has a ton of stars. Granted, it is a lot of gold. You know, you have you have yeah, a lot of gold for it. But I usually will bring him because it is worthwhile. Now, obviously, you have to watch out. Protect your general at all times. I mean, that's a given in NW3, especially if you're bringing such a powerful gen. But if you like playing at risky or if you want to bring um, units that can, um, like this one, have inspire, shock, resist, obviously, guard units... Um, to inspire your men. I think there's even like really good combat gens as this one. You can see it has what? That's like five stars. Um, has shock resist. Doesn't have inspire. Um, those are all points you need to consider when uh, bringing Russia 9. Um, that if you're not, not going to bring a high star general, you better bring some combat gens with some good uh, stars or just units that can inspire. I think... This does inspire the Caval Guard Inspires. I mean, it's a very large unit in very, very expensive. Um, I mean, this one does as well, but it's another massively expensive unit. Um, so, you know, you just gotta, you gotta choose what you want to bring. This is obviously a little cheaper than a Caval Guard unit or even a Guard unit. So, you know, something to consider. Now, uh, obviously, with a Russia 9 build, you gotta decide what your playstyle is. Are you a, gonna try to use it for shooting or for melee? Honestly, usually you're gonna do best if you want to charge into melee. Um, you gotta be careful, obviously. It's the morale of most units, most of your cheaper units. Isn't the greatest. Like I said, it has been improved. You have morale usually of 5 to 7 um, when it comes to Russia. However, the beautiful thing about Russia and the thing I like to bring with Russia is some Prussians. Some Prussians with some really good stats. Um, if you can see over here for about, you know, what, 200, 260 gold, even 100. And, man, I actually don't like bringing the lower tier Prussians. But for like a mid-tier Prussian 384 gold unit or something like that, you have some accuracy of 24, reloading skill of 61. I think there's even some that have um, like... 80s depending on the role this role isn't as good as some of the others have been um you can sometimes get the role and bring some prussians with 80 something reload skill which if reload skill for those who do not know is how fast they will reload and fire again um it's it it's high it's high for the prussians now granted their melee stats are pretty bad but you never really want to melee with prussia they will kind of how i use them is i attach them to the flanks of my russian army um they will be acting as light infantry and they will sit on the flanks of your massive thick Russian lines and they just will chew away at the enemy flanks. And then obviously you have your reserves, you have your Russian reserves to throw in if they try to go in for melee. And uh, also some of the Prussians will, tr will uh, build a square, which makes them definitely a little bit easier for protecting your lines against Cav. Um, I think for the one I'm looking at here, there's only one squareable 
for the entire Prussian like light infantry or line infantry here. Obviously, there are some Russians as well that can are kind of categorized with these Prussians, and they have some good uh, you know accuracy of 20, 21, but a lot of gold. I usually go for the mid tier, you know, 61 reload skill, 24 accuracy for 380 gold, maybe even like this 260 man. It's a 74 reload skill with 23 accuracy. It's actually a really, really good unit for the gold price. You can bring you know, a couple of those, two, I think two or, yeah, you can bring two, then I usually would bring, you know, this 140 man unit, and that's your, you know, Prussian units that you'll bring, but I kind of digress, I need to probably start with the Cav, which is how I start my army off, you need to decide if you want to bring heavies or not, um, I used to bring the Caval Guard every time, they are a ton of gold, and usually as a general rule, when you are bringing a build, you want to, uh, you want to decide if you're going to, uh, you know, go heavies or not. Um, you need to decide because he heavies. Oh wait, where was I? Where was I going? With my thought process. Um, <laughs> with your build, you want to spend about three thousand gold on your build in average with cav. Um, that's just kind of what I was told. The golden rule. You can obviously spend more or less depending on what you want to do with that army. But usually, I will take some dragoons. Um, dragoons are very expensive um, for the stats. You can see here for about 766 gold, you can bring the equivalent of 938 gold for this side. And then you over, over here, you know, it's 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 probably the cheapest, this one, but you have 14. So I usually bring these two um, when I have these. Um, you want light cap always for scouting. It doesn't have to be a super good unit. I bring a cheap unit just for scouting. It's not supposed to be getting into fight. And I like bringing the Ulani Lancers. They have, you know, um, a beautiful charge bonus and you just run them around a flank. This is what I like to bring. I like bringing only four of the cab units. I don't like bringing a lot of cab usually. Same for the artillery. Um, I do not, I like bringing howitzers sometimes. I like bringing faster moving artillery. I hate having it sit in the back. So I usually won't bring 12 pounders. They're F3s. It's, it's, it's not terrible. You can um, spend this, I like bringing this six, it's five guns. It's a six pounder with five guns. It's an F4, so it's decent moving. And then sometimes if I'm feeling like, you know, depending on the map, I'll bring some howitzers as well. This is two howitzers. Um, we're already at almost 5,000 gold. So I probably will stick with just one artillery because I'm not bringing as much cab and I want to be able to defend my own army as well, especially with Russia. You don't have a lot of squares that you can bring. Now for the infantry, you can bring an average line. I mean, you see this, like, for instance, these lines right here, seven morale. You have, like, 13 to 12 melee attack with seven defense. Um, this one's a little bit better here. And you can see they're very large units, 130 men. Over here, even 148, 150-something, 135 for, uh, you know, some, some good stats. Like, I would probably bring a couple of these guys uh, just to kind of bolster my lines. And these guys aren't going to be super dependable. I also will sometimes bring guard, but uh, yeah, looking for a squareable, the cheapest square for the good stats. You can see here, you compare the two. Um, they're about the same. This one's a little better, so I'll bring two squareables. Um, obviously, you want your Prussians for your kind of light infantry. Now, you can see the difference here. It's just barely... Barely anything, but you can bring a lot more of them. Now, something I have started to do is bring skirms. Um, you also can consider bringing grenadiers. And keep in mind, all of this, guys, this is just my play style. Um, in no way take this as gospel truth that you have to follow this build. This is just my, from what I've seen with playing Prussia, or Russia 9, this is kind of, you know, the thing that I really uh, found that works well for me when it comes to fighting. I bring... The skirms actually is a newer thing, I'm not going to lie. Making it sound like, you know, that's all I do. Um, skirms is something I've been doing a lot more often. And, uh, yeah, I'm not bringing a high star combat gen just because I brought, I spent the 1660 on the Bagration General. Like I said, that could be, some people would view that as a mistake. I'm going to bring this combat gen, though, and uh, oh, I could bring a horse artillery, too. Oh, yeah, that's because, that's because... Russia and I has a bonus to gold. So that's that's kind of what I would usually bring to most battles. Um, you have your thick lines here, 140, 130, 150 man. These, of course, are your squares. You have some Prussians for flanking and shooting. 
Um, you can always exchange maybe one or two of these for some Grens. There's a really good large Gren here. Let me get rid of this so you can... Oh, never mind. All right. Well, hopefully you capture that because I'm going to do this so that I can look at the unit size. You can see 122 man Gren into your unit for a lot of gold. Honestly, it would probably be better just to bring the guard because they, they're... You know, have some good shooting stats, but you have other grenadiers over here that actually have some better stats. Um, it's up to you if you want to bring the grens. Uh, they have way better attack, obviously. But you know, if you're closing in with melee, you're probably gonna have some of your units break, and uh, you're gonna have to throw in more mass. You can also bring less cav, one less cav, like bring only one of the really good dragoon units, and bring a lot more infantry. I've done that sometimes, but as a general rule, you know. Russia 9 is, yeah, not bad at all. Russia 9 is a lot of fun. It's a challenge because you don't always have squares. In fact, there's been some times where I have been super risky and depended on only my cavalry and brought just squares. Um, yeah, just to kind of uh, take over. Now, you can also go for some heavies, you know, some cheaper heavies with like one Dragoon unit and then like, you know, something like that. And then a lot of the Lion Infantry just to uh you like don't even worry about getting squares for this one maybe you know use your cav defensively and depend on masses of russians and of course you can bring the shooting the shooting prussians to uh kind of oh, that wrong one uh the shooting prussians will be like your your uh, saving grace you'll bring you know a good amount of prussians bolstered with oh yeah and i forgot my artillery and you can you can also be you know bring in just like a regular six pounder this is 800 gold four of them not bad but of course you can see it drops the price a lot um and then you can you can choose to not go with any skir or any uh skirms whatsoever and you can still always bring this six this horse artillery so yeah hopefully this is helpful guys like i said this is just you know Take with a grain of salt, there's probably always going to be critiques being like, oh, you shouldn't bring this, you should bring this, and yes. That, that's the beautiful thing about this, though. Everybody can bring whatever you want, and uh, it's your build. You know, obviously there can be improvements made, always improvements made, and you can always be listening to people who will uh, be able to give you some good advice. I love the Russian 9 because they're large units. I love my infantry, so yeah. Um... I hope this was helpful. I mean, it's actually pretty short, but yeah, this is just basically the things that I found with playing Russia 9. And like I already said, you can, uh, the roles will change depending on what's going on. Um, another a side note, Kazakis can be really good to bring instead of the Ulani. Um, they're pretty expensive, but they're, they're about the same. I think they just have like a shock resist, which will uh, make them basically, they take they take some hits and they don't instantly route based on that but uh these guys don't have the shock resist that the others do have all right guys so one more thing to kind of note with the uh, builds is how slow your army moves now you can see with most of my builds i got a very average speed of l3 which actually is not bad when you consider you know how uh slow russian armies usually are and uh also the reason why i bring f why I bring this six pounder if I'm not bringing the other six pounder. Look how fast this artillery moves. It's an F6. It's faster than the line infantry. It's like horse artillery. Now granted the horse artillery is, you know, over here. And that that's way faster. But um you notice how my basically my whole army moves at the same speed. Um and it's not lumbering along. It's actually pretty fast. Uh, considering you know you can get some L2s and I think some L4s most part though L3 that's a pretty good average army to uh, be able to uh, you know mobilize with and you're not gonna you're not gonna be left in the dust behind some enemy you're also not gonna you know be able to rush up and capitalize flakes so you got to still plan wisely when it comes to uh, you know your your maneuverability now, there's obviously a couple tactics to consider when you're playing Russia 9 against the French, which is usually what you'll be going against the French. Uh, you got to consider what their strengths and weaknesses are. Um, there are some French armies that definitely can outshoot you, and uh, it's generally not wise to take a massive shootout against France. Um, they're obviously 
you know some builds you can bring as russia 9 that can hold a candle to a french army when it comes to shooting a lot more prussians being in the mix you can just definitely see them whittling down it obviously depends on your placement if you're in a forest or if you're in a line if there's artillery that's starting to knock you around because you got to keep in mind with french artillery shooting at you it will start to damage your morale and it may not even matter if like they're actually winning the line fight with their lines shooting you if the artillery starts knocking away and you start dropping in morale that can take a heavy toll on you uh that's why if you're gonna take a line fight having those prussians can be super clutch because your russians can stand in a line fight for a little while if they have those reserves in place or a general close by the high star general is actually super crucial for that um, but then, of course, you have to you have to go for melee. It's Russia, you know. I, it's like one of the most fun parts of playing a Russian nine build is sending in cavalry and line infantry to give them a cold steel. And it is so satisfying when you start to watch a French line just buckle under the pressure of a bayonet charge. Obviously, you don't want to do a full on suicidal charge which i've i've done those before um and they they usually don't ever work well you don't want to frontally charge anybody honestly usually um there's some troops that you can do it and it'll pay off if you're going to full a frontal charge a french line have a unit behind the first unit the first unit's going to break um it may make contact and tie up that french unit so it can't fire at the next one but have a unit sitting behind obviously don't blob don't send tons of units at one unit that's that's a bad that's a big no-no um in the ntw3 community it's an exploit but have units in reserve and be prepared to try to turn a flank it's a little better to sneak around hit the flank push up a couple units when you're when you're closing in on the enemy position don't just send one unit by itself to bayonet charge you you got to have at least one or two units close behind to follow it up and that's the only way to really break your line obviously when you start attacking uh, the flank and start getting that route you need to push forward the rest of your troops that are in the line fight because you got to capitalize on the enemy falling back which they tend to always do unless they have reserves back which will counter charge and they're going to stay on their ground usually they will start falling back and you don't want them to get away uh keep in mind russia 9 not the fastest compared to most french armies so you can't let them start marching and then realize it because you'll never catch them uh, unless you have cavalry to box them in which is why cav is so important um, but yeah, if you're going to go into a shootout match, uh, make sure your Prussians are on the flanks, make sure you have your gen close by, make sure that you have units that are going to inspire the morale and keep your Russians in the fight because they are not going to shoot the greatest and they will take some losses, but they are large chunky units. Um, that's also an important thing with having heavy cav, you can send it in. I mean, heavy cav honestly should be used against infantry only. Uh, that's kind of their specialty. Yes, they're good for cav cav on cav fights but if you can use your heavy cav on the enemy infantry you will break them you will see mass routes with your heavy cav the cavalry guard or just across the air in general uh, but make sure you have infantry pushing up with that cav don't send the cav in alone uh just as always guys you got to support your attacks um sending in suicidal charges also don't get frustrated as russia not at russia i see a lot of russia players get frustrated because they're in the shootout and they're losing it and there's nothing to do so they just full frontally charge the enemy don't do that you can last a lot longer than you think you can you just gotta you gotta play it careful um even if it means falling back a little bit but obviously once again you are slower than the french maybe you don't have a lot of squares so play it cautiously if you are going to be mobilizing or moving around your troops make sure you have squares or cav to defend your infantry from the enemy cav charges because um, playing against Russia, the easiest thing to do is stand there, shoot them, and send Cav in when they don't have squares, and just watch the mass route uh, occur. All right, guys. Well, this may be a short video. I'm sure there's some stuff I may have missed. I hope there isn't, but I'm sure you know, there always is. Um, I'm gonna try to do more of these. I know it's a long time ago that I promised to make this guy video, so I apologize for how long it took. Um, time kind of gets away from me sometimes so i'll try to make more of these as time goes on and i play other fashions uh maybe make one about skirmishers and other people made ones about skirmishers but you know just kind of my thoughts on skirms because i've started using them a lot more and boy has it been some good experiences with the skirms so uh that'll be it for me today guys thank you so much for joining me um if you're not subscribed and you'd like to support my channel um continue uh, the growth up to trying to hit 2,000 subs, which, man, it's crazy that I'm saying we're trying to hit 2,000 because it was so short a time ago that I was trying to hit 1,000. So um, 
yeah, you can subscribe. That way, you know, you don't miss out on videos when I post them. Uh, when I stream NTW3, which I do a good amount, you know, drop by. Hey, anytime you see me streaming, I'd love to chat with you guys as best I can, obviously, with trying to multitask uh, a NTW3 battle. But um, thank you all once again, guys, for your support. It does really, really mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. So, guys, yeah, stay safe. Have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you all in another video.